another thing that happens in voice story, it happened right from the beginning um, when Winston and I started, was a theme within the theme, right? So tonight is interesting because there's aspects of heart, body, soul, listening, nothing fucking matters, right? So we hear this time and time again, and sometimes what's beautiful about it is the fact that you might not have heard it the first time, right? But I'm happy to get the message before I start screaming at raccoons in my backyard, right? You might have got it the second time, maybe not. You might get it the third time. Our last speaker is, you know, when you go through life and you have certain conditioning and and trauma, and you grow up with that, and you're looking for answer, you're looking for acknowledgement, and, and at some point, the person that you're looking for is no longer there. And then you're looking to resolve those things. We, we heard of the aspects of listening to heart and soul. The difference of, do you find that answer on the outside, or do you find it on the inside? I'm honored to invite the founder of Voice Story, Winston Young, who will share his story. Before I begin, I, I do want to reiterate uh, a trigger warning because it's going to get a little bit gruesome. I was seven, and I was goofing around with my sister while we were watching cartoons, horse playing, as children do. We found a hammer, and we thought it was funny to swing the hammer around, joking at each other. Well, not swing it, swing it at each other. We were just playing as if it was a sword. What I didn't know was the hammer was broken. So when it was my turn to swing it around, the head flew off. It hit the TV set, heard a pop, and the cartoons stopped. I didn't know what happened. All I knew was this was really, really bad. So as a seven-year-old, I did what I only knew how to do. I ran. Ran to my room and I hid underneath my covers, hoping that no one would notice. Well, a short time later, I heard footsteps walk down the hallway. I heard the bedroom door open. I knew it, it was my father. And I hear, did you do it? Don't lie to me. And I felt my heart grow cold. I didn't answer. He said again, did you do it? Don't lie to me. And I knew up until that point in life, every time that I screwed up, you get punished. So therefore, if I admitted to this, nothing good's going to come out of it. Kid logic didn't answer. He said, for a third time, answer me. Did you do it? Tell me the truth. I said no. I heard him walk away, heard the door open. I thought, maybe that's the end of it. Well, a short while later, I hear the door close. The blanket was torn away, and then I felt a burning sensation in my arm, my back, and my leg. Those are the first three strikes from a bamboo rod, thickness of a pencil, three feet long, that when swung through the air, you could hear it whistle. Burn, 
then the pain would register, and then I would scream. I knew at that point there was nowhere I could run. There was nowhere I could hide. I was exposed to the wrath of my father for lying to him. And all I could hear was the cutting of the air with this rod. Feel the burn, feel the pain, then I screamed. And I had to endure until he decided enough was enough. Burn, scream. I don't know how long this lasted for because halfway through this punishment, for the first time in my life, I disconnected. Part of me separated itself from this physical body and found a, found a spot deep inside where it felt safe and it let the body take all of the punishment because it couldn't feel anything. Eventually, the punishment ended. Eventually, that part of me felt safe to reconnect. And when it did, all I could feel is pain. It hurt to breathe. My throat was raw from screaming. And then when I finally opened my eyes and I looked, all I could see were purple-black welts crisscrossing all over my body. And I curled up in a ball and asked myself, why? That was when my dysfunctional fear of my father started. And throughout all that trauma, that is when my critic was born. Growing up wasn't easy. Navigating between trying to get acceptance and acknowledgement from someone that I was terrified of. And on the other side, a mother that kept telling me that everything that I did was not good enough. And then behind the scenes, a critic that of every waking moment was wanting to destroy my self-worth. But I endured. And I grew up, went to university, found out about life, music, the opposite sex, learned about alcohol, <coughs> and the wonderful power that it had to numb the pain. And more importantly, if I drank enough, it made the, the critic drunk, and I, for a very, very short moment, quiet. Growing up wasn't easy. I wanted to talk to my dad. Every time he said anything, I would just freeze. Instant hard trigger. That part of me would just disconnect and hide, and I would just stand there. My dad would be upset. And he goes, aren't you going to say anything? Am I talking to a statue? Why do I bother even dealing with you? Then he'd walk away. And then I'd reconnect and wondered what happened. And this would happen over and over and over again. And as much as I wanted to connect with my father, it can't happen. I'm terrified. Eventually, as I started dating, wanting to get serious and settle down with someone, I realized I can't be terrified of my father for the rest of my life. That just doesn't work. So I tried really, really hard to suppress the triggers to talk to him. Sometimes they worked. More often than not, it didn't. I would ask him, I didn't really know how to connect with anyone, so I thought, you know what, I'll just ask him a silly question and we'll get some banter going. But usually it starts with a silly question. He says, what do you want? I regress. He says he's talking to a statue. Nothing happens. But I told myself, I have time. I can try again. Well, 
there is one time I finally mustered enough courage. So much courage to go up and ask him this day. He was sitting there reading his newspaper, bowl the pot of water. And I already know how to cook a wonton. But I decided, hey dad, um, how long do I cook the wonton for? Puts his newspaper down, looks at me. I spent so much money to send you to university and you don't know how to cook a goddamn wonton. What type of son are you? I held my space. I'm like, well, can you show me? He stood up, pushed me aside, and I watched him cook the wontons, make the broth, cook the vegetables, put it all together, and put on a table a perfect bowl. I was pissed. Because I go, this did not unfold at all any way that I expected. We were supposed to do it together, have a little moment, make the wonton, share it. Nothing. Nothing. And I'm standing there, and he's reading his newspaper, and I'm watching him read his newspaper, the bowl of wontons is there, trying to figure out what the hell just happened. Because this wasn't supposed to happen. standing there. My father folds the newspaper down and he looks at me and says, if you're just going to stand there and not eat it, I'll eat it. What are you going to do? What do you want me to do? And I bit my lip, sat down, and he went back to reading his newspaper. And as I ate every single wonton, I swallowed it, knowing my feet that's how close I got. Five feet. Five more feet. I'll get to you. I just have to keep trying. Keep trying. I have time. There'll be another opportunity. I'll just keep trying. I cleaned everything up and left that moment be. A few months later, I'm having dinner with my parents, well, my girlfriend's parents, and I get a phone call. It's my brother-in-law. And he just said, you got to get down to the swimming pool. It's your father. He's in rough shape. Break all speed limits getting to the swimming pool. As I burst through the doors, I see two paramedics working on him. Then I see them stand up and they take the gloves off. Then I understood how vicious and cruel my critic is. As it whispered to me, now you'll never know what he thinks of you. The pain of that realization ignited a burn inside my soul. And I didn't know what to do with it. So I did the only thing I could. I suppressed it, not understanding what I was about to do, suppressing that much pain. From that moment, I had to find a way to deal with this. I did just about everything to seek acknowledgement, to be accepted in this world. I didn't give up. I had, in fact, I overcompensated. I started a company and now to be an international superstar. I created items and I have design pens after my name. I'm hitting history. The more I fed this hole that I had, it never got any smaller. In fact, it got bigger and bigger, so which I thought, I need to make more money. I need more notoriety. I need more status. Because when the world acknowledges me, this pain can go away. So I became a nightlife promoter. I became a drug dealer. I 
became a CEO, became a mercenary, became a whole bunch of things just to be someone in this world. But never once did that pain subside. I didn't know what to do. My sister eventually sat me down and said, why are you doing what you're doing? What's the purpose of this? You have enough money, so you're obviously not doing it for the money, but you're killing yourself. I lost dad already to stress. I don't want to lose you too. So I told her, I just want to know, just want to hear that I did good. And I'm not a fuck up, a colossal failure. I want to hear dad say that I did good. She looked at me and said, you know he's dead, right? You know what you're chasing after is impossible. I go, yeah, I do. But you don't know how much it hurts, this pain. I can't think of any other way to get rid of it. And she goes, you're insane. Maybe, but I can't live like this. So I continued chasing after acknowledgement. The alcohol helped numb the critic and shut him up every so often. But that was short term lived. Then I was introduced to substances. Really get the numb out. Don't get to feel anything. Duration's a little longer. But the pain never went away. And I never knew what to do. So I just kept going forward, doing exactly what I could to mitigate this loss, wanting to hear something that I could never hear. When I turned 50, and I know what some of you may be thinking now, Asian genetics, you can deal with it. When I turned 50, I went out for dinner. And then I went and watched the sunset. As I sat there, I reminded myself that Daddy, my dad passed away at age 55. And I'm slowly ticking closer to that. That's when my critic appeared and said, yeah, your dad died at age 55. Look what he accomplished. What did you accomplish? What did you accomplish, Winston? Dad had business, house, children, successful, well-respected in the community. What have you done? And then my critic proceeded to show me failure after failure, business venture that failed, relationship that ended. Winston's greatest hits. And I whispered, but I tried. And in my critic's glorious cruelty, he said, let me remind you what happens when you just try. And he plucked a very specific memory. And when I saw it, I could feel him, my critic take my heart and squeeze for what I saw. It's a perfect bowl of wontons. And I saw my father reading his newspaper. Said, this is what happens when you try.
And I couldn't stop reflecting on what I did or what I didn't do. The critical is, you know what, it's your birthday. I'm going to give you a gift. Because you just don't see it. You just don't get it. After all this time, you still don't understand. He chose to make this for you. He wanted to make this for you. He didn't push you away. He made it lovingly for you. He never judged you. In fact, the only person on the planet that's ever judged you. It's you. And with that moment of truth came a sickening acceptance that so much pain and suffering that I endured in my life was entirely self-inflicted. Entirely self-inflicted. And my critic understood what I felt. It cackled in glee and collected all of my failures and then replayed them. Now, with a newfound understanding that every relationship that I lost from people that I loved, things that I've created that I destroyed, was all by my own hand. That was too much to bear. I couldn't get away. I was trapped memory after memory. As I stared into the abyss, choking on this pain, asking, what the hell have I done with my life? Out of my lips, I said, I forgive you. I forgive you. And the tears that came swept my critic away and extinguished that burn deep in my soul. And for the first time, there's this quiet. There's no pain. Growing up, I was conditioned to believe that success looked like being married, having a house, side condo, car. Big fat salary, eight weeks vacation, dinner parties, poker nights with the boys. I have none of that. Compared to that list, I'd be considered a colossal failure if I chose to judge myself. Next month is my birthday. And for the first time in my life, I've decided to give myself a gift. A new definition for success. The old. Where I am no longer deeply wounded and a prisoner to my critic. My name is Winston Young, and I'm free. Thank you.